Hi, this is Chuck Gallagher, and well, it would seem like this is Casual Friday, but actually I'm headed to a, a medical conference, and I was asked a question about medical ethics. And let me do it this way. The, the times, they're a changing. Well, actually, that was published by Bob Dylan 55 years ago, and those words could not be more relevant today, especially in the medical community. The headlines are ripe with stories of well-educated, well-intentioned people making choices that have disastrous consequences that send ripples through the medical profession. A Kansas doctor, Stephen R. Henson, 57, was sentenced to life in prison for unlawfully prescribing medication blamed for an overdose death. This is the latest in prosecutions on a government crackdown on physicians related to the opioid epidemic. And there was also former Rochester Drug Company operative CEO Lawrence Dow III, who has been indicted on what prosecutors say are the first criminal charges against a drug company executive to stem from the opioid crisis. And then there's Sharia Darnell, 34, a former employee of a Williamsburg medical practice who was convicted on fraud charges for allegedly embezzling more than half a million dollars from her employer. The examples of unethical and illegal activities are not necessary to illustrate the point that if there has ever been an ethics crisis facing the overall medical profession, it's now. Why? What has changed over the past decades that created the environment for such amazingly poor behavior? You see, the question may be simple, but the answer is complex, at, well, at least in part. Human behavior dictates that when life gets out of balance, we cease rational thought and search for a quick solution. Like it or not, we're human animals, subject to the laws of human nature, fight or flight. So, Put into perspective, if our financial health is good, our relationship health is good, our physical health is good, if life is in balance, we tend to make good decisions. But when something in life goes topsy-turvy or gets out of balance, we cease to think rationally and fight or flight kicks into gear. When that happens, the chance for making unethical or even illegal choices rises exponentially. So to make it simple, I, I kind of feel like Forrest Gump, I'm a simple man. Let's assume that in the medical pr practice you receive notice from your insurance provider or the federal government that your reimbursement is being reduced. The impact is clear. In order to maintain the revenue levels, uh, there will need to be more work for less money. That's the life out of balance. The question then becomes, how does one respond to the ever-changing world of a 21st century medical organization or practice? Income is reduced. Lifestyle likely remains the same. Cost of the practice is the same or increases. You see, what practice managers and medical professionals face today is unprecedented in rapid change. Now, there are three components of an ethical lapse or fraud. So think of decision-making process as a, as a three-legged stool. It takes all three legs attached in order to have a foundation that you can stand on. The same is true for the components of an ethical lapse. So, leg one, need. In my example above, I suggested that an insurance company or the government reduce the reimbursement for a particular procedure. That reduction in revenue creates a need. The need is simple. Less reimbursement requires either more work to make up for the reduced revenue or reduced costs to create the same bottom line. Either way, less income or revenue triggers a need that must be addressed. Leg two is opportunity. You see, it stands to reason if there's a need, then one must find a way to solve the problem. Hmm. How do I make more money when the services I'm providing are generating less? That question is rampant in medical practices today. Increasing pressure on the top line is forcing well-intended people to think differently about what they do to replace the lost revenue stream. Some consider coding changes. By the way, not all are legal or ethical. Others might reduce time with patients to see more or code for procedures that weren't performed, definitely unethical. 
Either way, there are temptations to enter into business arrangements that are less than ethical, but from which a new stream of revenue emerges. Whatever the choice, the concept here is to find an opportunity to solve the need. Now, before we go to leg three, it's important to note, regardless of the need or perceived opportunity, if you have an ounce of integrity or moral fiber in your being, you cannot make poor or unethical choices unless you can firmly grasp leg three, which is rationalization. Say you miscode something for the express purpose of increasing revenue to make up for the shortfall or lost revenue shortfall mentioned above. You see, that's fraud. But if you rationalize that, well, everybody does it, it's only this one time. We didn't deserve the cut in revenue, so this is only fair. Any of the preceding sentences are ways to make a bad choice okay in order to continue. It's much like speeding on the highway. We all do it and say, but that's the speed of traffic. If I, if I do the speed limit, I'll be creating an unsafe environment on the highway. You see, speeding is illegal, but we do it anyway because we can rationalize everybody does it. And really, what chance is there I'll get caught? When one can rationalize a bad choice, one can make that bad choice over and over again. The world we live in is complex, especially the world of the business of medicine. With the government looking to crack down on abuse and fraud and the simplicity of being exposed by something as simple as a mobile device, we must be vigilant about the choices we make. As simple as it may sound, there's a tremendous power in having regular meetings where issues of need, opportunity, and rationalization are discussed. Most poor choices are made subconsciously, at least at first. So when we openly discuss the framework for our choices, we move that framework from the subconscious mind to our conscious mind. When that happens, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Truth is, the more we discuss the foundation of good or bad choices, the greater the likelihood we make good choices.